Hey guys, Mr. C here, and I'm going to show you how to set up the box problem, which is the very last example of the section 1.3 note packet. First, I'd like to talk about a couple of key points before we start marking these diagrams up. Uh, of course, in the note packet, you only have the diagram with the square and the perforated corners here. Um, but if you want to go ahead and draw yourself a three-dimensional box, that would be very helpful because there are some things I'd like to go ahead and label on this as well. All right, the first key point <clears throat> is that the piece of sheet metal is a square. However, we don't know how long each side of the square is. So that's probably where we should start. And by start, I mean let's go ahead and assign a variable to the unknown side length of the piece of sheet metal. So maybe say let x equal, and I'm using x of course as the variable, uh, how about we say x equal the length of the piece of sheet metal, just to keep it simple. Okay, now that that's done, I'd like to go back to the diagram that's included in the notes and um, label the unknown side, uh, the side lengths, as x. So to do that, I'll do it this way. I'll say that the side length here is x. And again, noting that this is a square shape, the other side would also have to be x units long. So we have an x by x square. Now according to the problem directions, um, how we're going to form this box is by removing four squares uh, from each of the corners of the original piece of sheet metal. Now it does say that the side length of each of those squares uh, that are being removed are nine. So essentially we're going to be removing a nine by nine square from each corner of this piece of sheet metal. So I'd like to go ahead and indicate that on this diagram as well. So this corner right here is a nine by nine and that's going to be removed, as well as this corner, and also the rest of them. So once those are removed, you can see that there are going to be four flaps that are formed. And I'd like to go ahead and indicate those on this diagram in the color green. So that's going to be a flap, this is going to be a flap, this is a flap, and of course a fourth flap. So essentially what's going to happen is once those corners are removed, these flaps are going to be turned up to form the sides of the box. Which brings me to another key point. Number two, the base of the box is not the same length as the original piece of sheet metal. So at this box up here, we can't say that the base of the box is an x by x. Because remember, this box is being formed by taking away 9 by 9 squares from each corner of the piece of sheet metal. Now in this first diagram, I'm going to show you just exactly where the base of the box is at. It's actually in the middle here. So this is the base of our box. So with that said, it would probably be a good idea to figure out an expression representing the side lengths of the base. So the big clue here is that we're removing a 9 by 9 square from each corner. So that what that means is that if we start out with the side length of x for this piece of sheet metal, and we take 9 units away or 9 centimeters away from one side, and also 9 centimeters away from the other side, how many total centimeters have we removed from x? 18 exactly. So that means that the length of the base of the box is not going to be x, but it's actually going to be x reduced by 18, or as an expression, x minus 18. Now the other side length of the base of the box is going to be the same thing because if you think about it, the other side of the square piece of sheet metal here started out as x, and we're again removing a 9 uh, centimeter length on one side and 9 centimeter length on the other side. So the second length of the base of the box is also x minus 18. Now there is one more dimension that we are going to want to know for the box, which will help us going with our algebraic solution of this problem, and that's the height. So that's going to be my third and final key point. And right here, 
the height of the box is actually determined by the size of the square cut out from each corner. All right, and this is something that I'm going to have to show you in class. I have a nice little manipulative for it so that it can fully click. Um, but with that said, since we are removing a 9x9 nine nine corner uh, from each of these corners here, um, you may even be able to see this in this diagram right now. But remember, removing the corners forms the four flaps. Um, and each corner is a 9x9, nine nine, which actually determines the height of each of these flaps which ultimately means that the height of our box is going to be nine centimeters. All right, so that's the setup for the box problem. I'm gonna cut the video here. Um, in the next video, I'll show you how to take all this information, set up an equation, and then of course, solve it. Thanks for watching.